Joining us now is the man, the myth, the legend, Stephen Sahoyas of North Star Bet. Stevie, how you doing, man? I'm doing well. We're in the Toronto area, and the weather is gorgeous. It's a nice day. The playoffs are around the corner. What's not to be excited about? I know. It's a beautiful day. There's so much going on in the NHL. Uh, a few storylines I want to talk about. Let's start with the Boston Bruins. Um, just two points they need to break the uh, regular season points record, which was set by the Montreal Canadiens uh, back in 77, 132 points. They take on the Capitals tonight, huge favorites. Do you think they get it done tonight or do they need another game? I think they do. You look at Washington. This is a team that played last night. Wasn't an easy game either against the Islanders. Boston, they set the win record already on Sunday. They seem to be adamant on just taking care of business as soon as possible here. Their last two games are also a couple of easier games. Not uh, They're not playing with many playoff teams left. So I think the Bruins get it done tonight. They set the record. And then you, you see just as many Providence Bruins as you can over the final two games of the season. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. Do you, do you think there's a danger that it's been almost too easy for the Bruins? And I'm not dismissing what a great team they are this year. I mean, it's incredible. They've been around for a number of years now. They know each other, that there's great veterans and youngsters coming through there. But, you know, the playoffs are different. Um, this is a playoff season team, but it has been so simple for them from, from game one right through the game 80 at this point. It has in some respects, when you look at how the year started for them, though, Boston, they were missing some key guys. Marshawn was out and Charlie McAvoy was out for a good chunk of the beginning of the season. And they held on just fine. You had guys like Hampus Lindholm stepping up, playing at a Norris caliber level while, while he was out. Jake DeBrusque has really fit in well and nice for Boston. It's been easy once you know they got these guys back. But I would say that they've had some adversity along the way as well. And you don't get the 63 wins without holding it down when the, the injuries were piling up earlier in the year. So, yes, it has looked easy and they've made it look easy. But winning 63 and 82 requires a lot of discipline on a nightly basis because it's so easy to take your foot off the gas for a, a week straight in February or, you know, 10 days in March and you lose four games. Boston just hasn't let that happen. And I think it's it looks easy from where we're sitting but in turn especially in the division they play and it takes a lot of discipline uh if the playoffs ended today they'd be playing the new york islanders if you were the bruins who's the opponent they wouldn't want to face in the first round you hit the nail on the head it's the islanders i would not want to play new york because you know sorokin can get hot and at this point it really looks like no matter who boston matches up against they're going to have the edge when it comes to forwards, when it comes to defense. But goaltending is where the Islanders might be able to squeak it out. Nothing against Linus Allmark. He's been fantastic as well. But you have two guys who are firmly entrenched in that best of conversation. And goaltender is a fickle position. One of mm -hmm. those guys can get hot and knock you right out of the playoffs. And I think the Islanders have the biggest threat at doing that. But they're also maybe in the worst spot, considering when you look at where they are. They've played one more game than Pittsburgh. And their loss last night against the Washington Capitals really put them in a tough spot. When you look at the at bottom of the East play in race, oh, sorry, playoff race, who do you think gets in? Because Florida has been up and down all season, a major disappointment. The Islanders haven't been as good as we expected, especially post Paul Horvat trade. And then you have Pittsburgh, where it's basically been Sidney Crosby carrying this team on his, his, his back, right? Who do you think gets those final two spots uh, in the wild card? If you would have asked me before last night, I would have said the Islanders and the Panthers, but losing to Washington, knowing what Pittsburgh has left on their schedule, I mean, the schedule makers couldn't have done them any bigger of a solid down the stretch here. You get Chicago, Columbus to close out the <laughs> year. I mean, you got you got two teams that they're going to be trying to lose maybe worse than the other one did because they want to win the Bedard sweepstakes, right? Like, they're going to be trying to one-up each other at the bottom of the standings. Chicago, they've lost 11 of their last 12. They look like a disaster. It's hard to say Pittsburgh doesn't end up getting in now. The Islanders end up missing just because of a tough loss to Washington. The margin of error is that thin between those three teams. And Florida, they lost last night, but they still got the loser point. So I think it's the Islanders that miss out. And it's going to be weird. It's two straight years of no playoffs for the Islanders. And this is a team that their window to win is right now. So um, The Pittsburgh Penguins, minus 520 tonight to win this game against the Blackhawks. <laughs> uh, let's continue with that race. You didn't mention the Buffalo Sabres. Um, it'll take quite a bit. Of, pretty much I got to win out the next three games 
to make the playoffs. But do you believe that there's still a chance that they can squeak in? I think they're toast. I, I, I don't put Buffalo in that mix at all. The Sabres, they, they blew too many games that they should have won down the stretch here. They yeah. played Washington mm-hmm. earlier, about a month or so ago. They lost that game. They lost to the Flyers. They, they went on a bad cold streak at the worst time possible. And it's just hard to figure that they'll make the playoffs now. They've been playing great. Devon and Levi's been solid in net since they called him up. He's been solid 4-1. He's got like a 908 save percentage. So he's been really good. But it's just too little too late for Buffalo, unfortunately. It's a good learning experience for them to be playing meaningful games at this point of the season. And they're a young team, so that's going to be experience that's going to go to good use in the future. But I just think it's too late for the Sabres. Yeah, Jersey, Ottawa, and Columbus coming up for Buffalo. Yeah, yeah I mean, so go ahead. And I wanted to say, Stevie, I want to touch back on Sidney Crosby. Over the weekend, he got his 1,500th point, you know, 15th fastest player. He missed over 200 games with a concussion. I want to ask you a hypothetical question here. Had he not missed those games, where do you think he'd be sitting point-wise? Because I think he would be definitely in the top 10 by now if he didn't miss those games. Oh, for sure. And those were games right in the prime of his career. You talked or mentioned earlier about Crosby carrying the Penguins right now, and he has been doing that this season. But he was on a different level at those stages of his career where he was dealing with the concussion. So it's it's hard to say, you know, looking at it theoretically, but, I mean, you know, 250-plus games, the guy at this point of his career, he's p- p- producing at more than a point-per-game pace. It's hard to not peg him for an extra anywhere between, you know, 275 to 300 points. So it's it's a shame that we did lose those Crosby games, but we're lucky that he was able to recover the way he did mm-hmm. because you've seen concussions just really – sap a lot of the effectiveness and uh, even more than just time out of these players you know it usually hampers them later in their career we're lucky we're seeing Crosby at this stage still produce at the level he is considering everything he's been through yeah I mean 17 straight years in the playoffs I mean it's just incredible isn't it for for Pittsburgh but the decline is is happening you know in the Penguins for sure and when you look at the Buffaloes Detroit's Ottawa's too. Mm. I mean, are we on the cusp of a new generation? Do you think in in the NHL we see some of those uh, Tampa Bay, another one, Washington, still a, a yeah. Washington, good teams potentially Tampa especially, but teams that are very much coming to the end of their their run. It seems. Do you think next year will be a different look for the NHL? I think so, and it's one of those things where these things take time for them to materialize. There's the the initial phase, you know, the team makes the playoffs, and then you look at a team like the Maple Leafs. It's make the playoffs, and they still haven't won a playoff series. The Leafs are still waiting for their time, and they've been <laughs> knocking on the door for years, right? You've had Boston and Tampa Bay in front of them, and they've been perennially a top team in the league in the regular season, and just a team that hasn't been able to have that playoff success. So it's it's easy to maybe say, okay, you know, from one year to the next, there's going to be a big leap, but these things usually take a lot of time. The Avalanche knocked on the door for so many years before they ended up winning the Stanley Cup finally. They went through some Stanley Cup heartbreak too in the playoffs, losing in first series and and all that, not making deep playoff runs. The Lightning, they were the same way. They lost to the Columbus Blue Jackets. Everyone remembers. They got swept before they went on this run that they went on. So it's one of those things that these teams that are emerging, yeah, they might make that step from bubble team to playoff team, but that step to legit Stanley Cup contender usually takes like four or five years. It's not a, a quick onboarding process. So they, they're, they're better, right? So, I mean, if, if Ottawa get in next year and go for a deep run yeah. and the Leafs crash out in the first round again, it's going to just destroy <laughs> I think what Stevie's leading to is that the Leafs are going to make a run this year, right? Yeah, They've had their kicks. Yeah, apparently, yeah. Keep Stevie, how much do you enjoy <laughs> saying the Leafs haven't won a playoff round in, in light years? <laughs> Well, did I say that two or three times just now? Did I did I did I did I say that the Leafs haven't made a deep playoff run like oh, twice or three Stevie, times? I can't I really... remember. But but you know what? I honestly think that if, if if this year has to be the year because the Lightning are not the team that we've seen them be in the past. Vasilevsky's been solid, and he's always the X factor. You worry about that, but I mean, you have to do it if you're Toronto. The way they loaded up at the deadline, this has to be the year. <laughs> Don't do it, Stevie. That's you're, every year. You're though. putting the kiss of death on the Leafs. I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know you tricky Bruins fans, all right? Um, before I let you go, can you give us uh, one of your – oh, we got to go. Sorry, I was going to ask you for a best bet. Make sure you go and follow Stevie Sohoyas of North Star Bets for that best bet of the night. Stevie, thank you so much. No, no problem, guys. Thanks for having me on.